Are you recording? Hey guys, I'm Martina and you're watching Natural Nerd. Today we're gonna take this Game Boy and make it into an awesome Mewtwo edition. Alright guys, first things first, I do have to take this thing apart. There are six screws on the back, right here, 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 and oh, there's one here too. There we go, and there's two more screws. Okay, so finally we can very gently try to remove the screen. I'll just put this away for now. There's also this tiny piece of plastic almost hidden. It covers the battery light, so it's really important that you don't paint this. Alright, and away with the plastic screen. Remove the sticker. The only thing left is to remove the metal that holds the cartridge in place. Awesome, so now I have two pieces ready for sanding. I prefer to use wet sandpaper. I usually start at grid 600 and then work my way up from there. I do make sure that the surface is absolutely smooth in between each layer. If there are any scratches, it will really show later on. Plastic usually have this layer of protective coating around it, so now I made sure that there's no protective coating on it and the surface is perfectly smooth and ready for airbrushing. I always start off by putting on a white base color. The reason for this is that it really brings out the color I'm gonna put on top of it. I followed up with this really cool medium aluminum base, but you can use silver spray paint instead. I feel like since this is gonna be a Mewtwo edition, I do need some purple in there. So I'm gonna create a fade. We've tried a lot of different types of paint. We figured that automotive paint is what really sticks to the plastic surface. We used water-based paint for airbrush, but you can also use spray cans if you want to. The reason why we use airbrush colors is that I can paint by hand with it. That's really important for me so that I can make different designs with it. All right, so I used the very same paint to paint the Pokemon by hand. It can be a bit difficult to get the proportions right. To make it easier, I would suggest to use a picture as reference. For this Game Boy, I did make a sketch beforehand. If you want to use it as a template, I'll put a link to it in the description. I tried to be consistent with my design because I want the front and the back to match. But of course, you should just go for whatever works for you. It's important that the paint hair is completely dry, not just dry to the touch, before we continue. Because if it's not, it might crack during the next step. Now it's time to add some clear acrylic spray. And there we go, now it's complete. That means it's time to check it out. This is a really great project because you can create so many different designs and variations. I thought it was a great idea to take an old console and give it some new life. 
If you want to do something similar, you don't have to make it as complicated as I did, but the basic steps are still the same. I know that console modding isn't exactly new, so if you made your own console mod, please let me know in the comments or send me a private message and I will definitely check them out. Thanks for watching guys! If you want to see more of us, make sure to subscribe to our channel and leave a thumbs up if you like the video.